Good morning. morning. It's wonderful to be able to be here with you this morning to celebrate the presence of our God on this, the fourth Sunday of Easter. If you are visiting with us today, we especially welcome you and hope that you feel free to participate fully in our worship as outlined in the bulletin that you have using the books in the pew rack in front of you. And welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us on Facebook. We continue now with the opening acclamation found in your worship bulletin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. risen Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. together the collect for the fourth Sunday of Easter. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. 
came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us read, let us read all together the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. second reading is from the first letter of Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Christ. Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and abandoned. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. In the name of God, amen. Well, in case you haven't noticed, today is Good Shepherd Sunday. <laughs> and I'm reminded of a summer years ago when I did a vacation Bible school at St. Paul and St. James in downtown New Haven. They had a children's mission then that served some of the toughest, poorest neighborhoods in the city. In that particular summer, when I was doing the Vacation Bible School, the theme was the Good Shepherd. And every day we read the story of the Good Shepherd, and then the children would reenact the story. And I had a nice, smooth, wood shepherd staff about five feet tall that the shepherd used, and I had a cloak for the shepherd to wear, because you know every shepherd has to have a cloak, although this one in an earlier incarnation was our son's Superman cape. They never knew that. But every day there was a great clamoring among the kids to be the shepherd. Everybody really wanted to be the shepherd. After all, this person wore the cloak and got to hold the big wooden staff and got to tell all the other kids what to do, where to go. All the other kids were sheep. And they'd have to follow the shepherd around on hands and knees as the shepherd called them each by name. And one day, I'd gotten kind of tired of this argument and how much time we spent figuring out who was going to be the shepherd. So I just asked one of the teachers, you know, Jody, why don't you be the shepherd today? Jody was a gifted and beautiful singer. 
And so this day when she gathered all of her sheep and went into the sheepfold and closed the card, cardboard gate into the, the sheepfold, got them all gathered in, she sang them a lullaby. And a dozen or so rough and tumble city kids of various ages all curled up on the rug in the sheepfold and became quiet, contented sheep. And after that day, none of the kids ever wanted to be the shepherd again. <laughs> Every day for the rest of the session, from the oldest to the youngest, the toughest to the tenderest, each child wanted to be a sheep. They loved Jody being the shepherd because she would sing to them when she put them in her sheepfold every night. And I've thought about this transformation of these children, wondering what they were feeling and what touched them so about this experience that they wanted to repeat it over and over. And I'm quite certain that some of these children had never known this kind of tender, passionate love the Good Shepherd has for each of us. You know, this image of the shepherd, of God as a shepherd, is such a powerful one to many of us, no matter our age or circumstance. And a lot of that comes from the 23rd Psalm. And Dennis, thank you for having us read it all together. That was so wise. Thank you for doing that. This psalm has been described as one of the wonders of the literary world for its universal comfort and beauty. And it, it's so deep, this psalm is so deep that scholars continue to study it. And yet it's so simple, you know, that children can appreciate it. But in all its beauty and profound wisdom, it's important that we not let this psalm become so familiar that we just get immune to it. You know, we've heard these words hundreds of times and we just let them kind of float over our heads. And don't stop to really absorb what's in it. When was the last time you stopped and read Psalm 23 for yourself, not at a funeral or in the middle of church, but you stopped and read it for yourself and really put yourself there or put yourself into the sheepfold and rested with God, our shepherd. When did you let yourself be effortlessly calmed and nurtured by our shepherd? Probably nobody has sung you a lullaby. When have you just sat and let God comfort you? I don't think many of us do this. I know that I don't do this very often. I think we go about our busy lives doing this and that, paying the bills, attending community events or classes or groups, doing our volunteer jobs, going to work, taking care of aging parents and younger children. We don't stop much, do we, to just be, to be with God, to be nurtured by God. I think those children at the Vacation Bible School were onto something big. They lived lives that weren't easy. And when they got the chance to be quiet and to be cared for and loved by God through Jody, they took it. And I think today that God is inviting us into the fold to be nurtured and cared for. No agenda 
just to feel God's love and peace, like those children felt when Jody sang to them. We've been through a lot, our parish has, in these last eight months. Don't you agree? Since Harrison retired, we've grieved. We've gotten used to having different priests every Sunday or every other Sunday, or who knows what the schedule is. We struggled and experienced a lot of anxiety about our finances and whether we'd be able to have a full-time priest. We worried about the future of our parish, and we've had meetings, and we've done the work the diocese requires of us in order to call a new priest. Hard work. We've all done it, and our vestry has worked harder, and I'm sure, than they ever thought they would when they signed on to be vestry members. We've had listening sessions. We pondered who we are as a parish and who God is calling us to be. And now, all that work is done, completed. Our final paperwork, God willing, will go to the diocese soon. I got it from Susan's mouth this morning. It's going to go to the diocese soon. Thanks once more to the unrelenting commitment of our vestry. And can I get an amen? amen? Yes. And so we're in kind of a resting period now as we wait for the next big steps, for the rector position to be posted and candidates to be vetted, and for our vestry to interview the candidates and make a selection for our next priest. So we can take a breather for a minute, right? So this is a breather sermon. And Psalm 23 offers us the perfect resource for this time of breathing and refreshment. We have an opportunity now to be renewed and refreshed by our God, the Good Shepherd, who has all we need. Perhaps in this time of waiting and taking a breath and anticipation, we can now center our hearts on our relationships with God and with one another because that's what the shepherd is all about, relationship, keeping us connected, safe, gathered, loved. Psalm 23 describes an intimate relationship between God and God's people who have the utmost confidence that God will take care of them no matter what. And isn't that what we need right now? To trust that in our lives and in our parish, God will provide all we need and that God is taking care of us. So I invite every one of us in this time when we've completed a big part of our work in this transition to savor who we are. Lean into the love and promises of the Good Shepherd who gives us all we need, who gives us each other. Let's spend this time appreciating our community. In weeks to come, let's celebrate Pentecost in a few weeks. Let's come to the picnic, enjoy one another. Let's, when the time comes, share lemonade together under the trees. Let's give thanks that our cup runneth over and that God does restore our souls. And Mark, Mark, 
I'm going to call on you, please. I know this is not in the script. Please, can you go to the organ? And could you play again? And Mark is going. I know we didn't plan this, and I know it's going to take a little longer. Could you please play the sequence hymn again? And choir, could you please softly, meditatively sing us all a lullaby as you sing the sequence hymn again? Nothing like spontaneous lullabies. And all of us will sit and soak in this lullaby sung to us by our Good Shepherd through the voices of our choir.
death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended in the heaven, seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For all those on our parish prayer list and those we name before you, either silently or aloud. Milo. For those who died from gun violence. Let us pray for those who are commended to the prayers of the parish, including Wayne Juniver, Nancy Cairns, Evelyn, Rula Burrow, Baby John Rubin, Henry, Shari, Josh L, Cynthia D, Brenny, and Cindy T. And let us pray together for our search process. Dear Lord, in this season of change, we pray for our parish of Christ Church and our vestry. Guide us that we may be patient in our discernment, steadfast in our commitment, and imaginative about our future. We look to your wisdom and companionship in our journey to find a rector who will enlighten and inspire us through preaching, who will engage us through teaching, who will encourage us to serve others, and who will motivate us to celebrate the gospel in word and deed. All this we ask so that we may all come to know the love of Christ more deeply. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Welcome.
my mother in law. I heard that. Yes. Yes. Welcome. Peace. Peace. God's peace be. Peace, Chris. Someone doing announcements this morning? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Rob Hutchison, a member, proud member of the Christ Church Vestry. Um, and I want to welcome everybody uh, to this morning's service. If you're new, we'd love to hear from you. Please fill out a pew card and uh, drop it in the offertory uh, basket or in the back of the church. I want to thank our fellow parishioner, Marianne Osborne, for uh, officiating today's service. And I have a few announcements. Um, most are in the bulletin, so you can read. I won't drone on too long, so please take the bulletin home and read it. A couple of th um, next week, we're teaming up with our friends from St. John's in North Guilford for um, what? Today. It's today. And do you still need volunteers soon? No. No, no, no. You're jumping ahead of me. <laughs> um, so, so next week is Chapel on the Green, and uh, we'll be making sandwiches in the morning on Saturday, which is a load of fun if you've never had a chance to do that. And then we'll be serving um, uh, uh, lunch uh, then on Sunday. So I hope you can join us there. And also, just give a plug for ECW um, uh, Roses from Mother's uh, Day. Um, information in the Bolton. Then, a couple of other quick announcements. Um, you're invited today to St. John's up in North Guilford for a planting of a peace pole. So um, who's leading that? Okay. So that should be fun. Hopefully the rain holds off up there. Um, there's a calendar meeting right after church today in the Guild Room. So if you're in charge of events and need to get them on the master calendar, please join us. And then for Pentecost on May 28th, uh, we'll be doing the first reading from Acts uh, in a multitude of languages. So see Kay Hagen's if you would like to participate. Okay, that's it. And that's all I have today. And wear and, red. And wear red. Winnie. Thanks, everyone. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries today? Michael and Ed coming up solo, so it's got to be a birthday. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. Seriously? <laughs> and when is your birthday? Huh? When is your birthday? Yesterday. Yesterday. And yours? Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Coming, Coming. Go last, okay. Coming. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Watch over these, your beloved ones, Michael and Ed, O oh God, as their days increase, and pour upon them an abundance of your blessings in whatever they do, in their work at this parish, in their work in the world, in their ministries, in their families, in their day-to-day -day lives. May they know you as their helper and companion and sustainer and guide. May you be with them and walk side by side, and may they know your presence as a comforter, as a sustainer. We thank you for the blessing of the gift of their lives among us, for all that they give us in wisdom, in joy, and in discernment. And so as they celebrate another year in their lives, may they grow closer to you, 
May their love for you and your love for them be sustained and grow ever deeper and keep them safe and healthy. In your name we pray, Lord Christ. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this year and always. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this year and always. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. And now let us, with gladness, present the offerings of our life and labor to our God. Continue now on page 361 of the Red Book of Common Prayer. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the perfect offering for us who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. or sit as is most comfortable to you to worship. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive these holy sacraments and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the beloved people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And let us say together the prayer for spiritual communion with our friends on Facebook Live. Lord Jesus, I cannot now worship you at the altar of the church in the sacrament of your body and blood. Yet in spirit I would join myself with all those who in your holy church offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Visit me, I pray, with your mercy, pardon, and blessing, and fill me with faith and love and repentance. And so strengthen and sustain me by your grace that I may with pure heart and mind follow you, the only God, now and forever. Amen. Chris, this is the body of Christ, the bread of life. Annie, this is the body of Christ, the bread of life. The body of Christ, the bread of life. the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Could you say the words? The blood of Christ. Amen. I'm just kind of a stickler for those things. I hope I can count that high. And what about for you? It's good. Body of Christ, the bread of life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of life. Do you want this? The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you want that or that? Just bread. The body of Christ, the bread of life. 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christina, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May God bless you in all of your doings in life and love. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, ignore it. I'll go over. What you, want to you wanted this though. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I got it, Jean. Oh, Jean. Just like that. Okay. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lucas, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. The body of Christ, the bread of life. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hang on.
body of Christ, the bread of Adam, the blood of Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The prayer after communion is on page 365 of the prayer book and in your service leaflet. <clears throat> Together let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us. Fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and every day. Amen. <clears throat>